I feel very lucky to be playing with technology and being able to fit in many different landscapes and to put ideas out there that interact with the everyday community or environment. My name is Shona Kitchen. I have a very diverse background. I started off at Glasgow School of Art doing interior architecture and then went on to graduate from Royal College of Art in London with a, a MA in architecture. And it was extremely conceptual, which was really up my street. From there, I'd say that my work started to kind of move in very different directions that were inspired by architecture, but more sat between art and design and architecture. So it was really kind of work that explored the everyday in both architectural scale, landscape scale, product scale, and micro scale. <laughs> Research is a vital part of my process, both formally and informally. I see it as very much going out and foraging through dirt, through digital bits and pieces. Edge Town Project, which was a project that I collaborated with Ben Hooker, was looking at interfaces in the city. We were passionate about this kind of threshold near the M25 in London that was basically circles London and that being this zone where you'd find airports, you'd find switchyards, you'd find garden allotments where people would grow vegetables. So it was kind of this, this landscape where technology would rub, rub up against pollution, highways, motorways that would be feeding into the city. For that project and like many projects it was understanding the very landscape and the workings both socially structurally and politically of a certain location both ben and i ended up moving to the states and our works kind of traversed through different forms i think there's kind of the heavily narrative but there's also we started moving into public art work as well and that was a really exciting interesting landscape for me especially because i really like to create something that intervenes or sits within the everyday landscape dreaming foods was a commission from san jose airport or the city of san jose for us to create a work that was a microcosm of the airport was really exciting. The site was, you pass through TSA and there's this fish tank with a surveillance system submerged within it. You're not allowed to bring water in for a project that is a fish tank in an airport. It's past security, so every time you go in, you have to move past TSA. But there's very diverse audience that is looking at this project that sits outside of TSA is so rewarding. Working to develop the piece conceptually, we had to be extremely careful. We wanted the TSA workers to see it as their fish, their tank. They'd be looking at it every day. It didn't have to be seen as a, a critical comment against TSA or the other audience that would see it perfectly as this comment on control, this comment on surveillance, or the five-year-old kid that was just mesmerized by the fish in the tank. I feel very lucky to be playing with technology and being able to fit in many different landscapes and to put ideas out there that interact with the everyday community or environment. I was commissioned to do a project in London. I collaborated with a long time collaborator, Dominic Robson. Uh, the site was one of the last remaining tidal creeks uh, just off of the Thames. I was invited to do be part of a charrette in London that was looking at redeveloping or regenerating an area that was very close to Canary Wharf, which is the financial district, district of London. This project was looking at an area where they were revamping the area, but it was currently very much a working class uh, community. So from this charrette, I was then invited to propose a public art work, which was connecting the creek to the local community and also highlighting the area. All the buildings, all the architecture around that area had their backs to this creek. So the creek was 
historically it was a working creek. It was a creek where the barges and um, things would be carried up to to the factories. Um, so there was no need or there was no desire to to face the the creek and look at it. The creek was at this position where it was at a crossroads of different modes of transport. People would walk past it. There was ELR, which was the light rail. It, it was this cross point of these different modes of transition. I wanted to create a piece that was not complicated technologically, and it was made up of off-the-shelf components. So it was using simple garden LED lights and using a solar panel that was on the roof of a factory building nearby. And the piece was connected to the tide of the creek. So as the tide would rise, the sign itself would gradually, for high tide, the sign would then transform to the word high. And it wasn't instantly, it was over time. So one LED light or pixel would illuminate. It was a subtle project, even though it's in the center of London, but because of its location, it's, it's kind of hidden. Very much was designed for a community that might not exist for much longer in that area as, as Canary Wharf kind of encroaches. I'm happy if people pass by it and think it, it might just be a piece of the infrastructure that's already there, that's functional. I don't want art to stand out and, and shout and scream and go, I'm here and I'm going to be confusing and you don't, you, it will take you a long time to understand what I am. I think it's that point of simple gestures in the city or simple kind of points that might make you aware of something that you really didn't see or realize was there.